Hello and welcome back to City Planner Place where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And we are taking a look at the last build. And there are a couple things that could be improved upon that were mentioned in the comments. And I'm really excited to take an opportunity uh, soon to fix those things. But right now I think we're gonna leave most of it as is, except for one thing. So one of the comments mentioned that it'd be a good idea to make this a one-way road, and I agree with that. Although I generally like to have a couplet of, of one-way roads, that makes this a collector. So the way that we're gonna accomplish that is I think we're gonna upgrade these roads. And let, let's actually go back. We'll grab these industry roads. I don't wanna flip back and forth between industry and normal roads. So we'll add that, and then over here I wanna do the exact same thing in the opposite direction. So this will make these two roads function as a collector of sorts. So I hope that this will be a, a little bit more uh, of a natural movement through here. There is a cut through here and that's fine. Um, this, this, should, this should work better. In the future, I do wanna add a roundabout around this rock formation and reconfigure some of the things happening in this area. But I think it's gonna work fine for now. Whoops. <laughs> so the other thing that I wanted to take care of is there were some comments about the roads in this area not being correct in terms of the type of roadway that I was using. So I think right here, there was a little bit of concern that I used an industry road. So I'm gonna take that and I will convert this to a traditional normal road. And uh, we'll just kind of deal with a little bit of a industrial traffic heading down through there. Not a big deal. Now that's not the focus of today's episode. The focus of today's episode is developing this area. And it's a significant area, and I think that it poses a number of opportunities. But we need to give careful consideration to the way that we're gonna develop this. This is the transition between mid-rise uh, downtown and really low density and, and, and kind of a, a strip of density along uh, Sunset in, in, the, uh, in the oil industry area. So we need to, to have a really nice gradient of densities to form the urban transect. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't like that. <laughs> we must be on the edge with power. Uh, I guess it's not so bad. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but something happened. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But regardless, we're going to want to do something here that transitions the densities in this area. And in the future, I'm gonna put out a video talking about the urban transect and, and how it relates to city building. I think it's gonna be really fascinating, but we can see some of that right now in this video. So I noticed a couple opportunities in this area. First of all, we have this, tra uh, this, uh, this train line going on back here, and we have two high capacity roadway corridors. If we take a look at our topography, there isn't really all that much to speak of. There is a line here, we might want to focus uh, a road in this particular area. I'm looking at this area as a really phenomenal place for a transit-oriented development. Part of that is we also have this subway line going through here. So I think that there's an opportunity to link the subway network to the train network and have a passenger train here and provide some opportunities for people in this entire area to get around all of Verde Beach. And once we're done with this build, we are going to uh, work on a build that was requested in the community tab. Now I pose the question, wow, there it is again. This is bizarre. What is going on? I'm, I wonder what this is. Hmm. So I just want to make sure that our power is not getting disconnected real quick. I'm not 100% sure what's happening. We're going to keep, keep tabs on that because that is not good. We will start to bleed population if we lose power. So something to keep an eye on. In fact, I'm just gonna speed this up for a second, see if it happens again. Hmm, I'm not seeing it. And I really wanna hold off on adding another power plant until we get to our next build. So I asked in the community tab, what build should I pursue next? Uh, there were a couple options available. One was developing Oak Garden into something more substantial. Another was uh, reconfiguring the entire transit network. And then another option was to build the airport out here and finally enact the 81 tiles mod. And that is exactly what we're gonna do. We have uh, issued an advisory referendum to the community 
and uh, we're going to take the advice of the community. So I'm very excited about that. And then <laughs> it looks like our fire problems have come back. As I look around, I'm seeing a couple spots. You know what it was? This was on fire over here. Oh, boy. <laughs> so it looks like uh, Verde Beach is back in full force, burning itself down to the ground. <laughs> so back to the meat and potatoes of this episode. We are going to build a transit-oriented development in the middle of this area and use that as kind of the centerpiece of this new neighborhood in the way that we transition between uses. So we're not going to pay attention to either the grid over here or the grid over here. We're going to make our own and then merge those grids together organically in an effort to make a place that's special and unique. So what I'm thinking is we'll start out, we're going to make a grid over here that is 25 tiles wide. And in the middle of this, we are going to add our subway stop. So I want to make sure that this is centered. So I'm going to go up here. So if this is 30 tiles, rather <laughs> 30 tiles wide, we want to get 15. So this is 15 and that will be perfectly centered in theory. <laughs> so let's, let's just double check. Yeah, I'm off by one. There, that is perfectly centered. Okay, so the other thing I wanna do, so I want to mirror this. So I'm gonna bring a road up here, go beyond this. We're going another 30 tiles. And we're gonna put a passenger rail station in here. That's approximately centered there, I believe. Yeah, that is perfectly centered. So now you might be wondering, what am I gonna do with all of this? Well, I wanna flank this with roads. And actually, I'm going to do something a little, a little wonky to start out with. So I am going to have a little bit of a destruction here. I'm not going to pause it. There's no need. And I'm going to do something that might be a little controversial. But I want to create a connection, a real visual connection between these two areas. And we're going to have park space in between. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. The only thing I don't like is some of the grading issues that we're having in this area. So I do want to fix that. So let's take care of that right now. Okay, perfect. So what I was trying to do there is just create a nice transition, a nice slope here. And I was able to do that by laying out the roadway network first and then moving it temporarily to be able to, to, to kind of replace those roads. So through here, I can continue to have this collector. I'm not overly concerned about that. However, through here to really show that this is a park space, we are going to have some tree-lined roads. So I'm really liking where this is going. I don't love what's happening. These roads still seem unbalanced to me, so I think we're gonna redo them on this end. And we are gonna have to do a little bit of reconfiguration of sunset to make this work, unfortunately. All right. So now you can imagine we are right here and we get this stunning view all the way through of the train station. And we'll make some pedestrian connections through here. We're not gonna have development in the park. This is going to serve as kind of our delineator between the two types of areas and the density in these areas. So I am eliminating all foliage through there because I want to really make this uh, a, a unique place and that a really ordered place as well. And we're going to do that with the landscaping. So we're going to do a modified version of the Verde Beach grid. So we'll go up 12 and over 15 when we can, but we are extending out from the train stations or the, uh, the transit hubs. Now I will not lie, I am starting to question the appropriateness of extending this particular road through here, particularly because of how close these intersections are. That said, what I think I'm gonna do is I will end up turning off the junction here and maintaining that stop at the park. So that if, if this gets overly burdened in the future, we might need to either raise or lower this through this area, but, but we'll see. In fact, 
Uh, let me give a shot to it right now. Okay, so it's kind of ugly, but I think that this is gonna be best for the park. We might need to raise it up there. We'll find out when we start developing this area. So from here, I'm gonna build the grid out just a little ways, just a little ways. And we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Now over here, we're running into another unique challenge and that is we don't have the ability to place a road connection right here and that's not the end of the world. We will just make one more block out this way. Because we do want some sort of connection to that collector. It's gonna be very important. Okay, so we have this new neighborhood mostly laid out, but we need to connect into our old neighborhood. So we're just going to make these connections and then we'll add a dividing road in there so that we have some sort of logical break because these are pretty wide, long blocks, I guess for Verde Beach standards anyway. And we're looking at 180 or 1,080 uh, cost. Generally, we're at about half of that. So we're gonna wanna divide these blocks in half. That was very easy on that side. It's gonna be decidedly more challenging on this side. But that's okay. So let's make sure we have our road guidelines back on. We'll use our freeform tool to make the connections. Look at that, a nice clean connection in. Now I'm gonna turn some of these roads because I don't want them to act as kind of super collectors through this area, generating lots of traffic for this new neighborhood. So I think by turning them, I will make all of the connections through here less direct, which is really important in my mind. Now, one of the things I don't like is we're getting kind of wonky districts or wonky, uh, wonky roads through here. Let's see if we can clean that up in any way. Certainly not perfect, but not as bad as it could be. Okay, so I think that the, the roadway network makes some logical sense. We've left some larger spaces, and I do think I want to kind of cordon off some of this pollution and add a road through here, just as kind of a signal to myself not to put any residential uses in this area at all. Unfortunately, it's not gonna let me create a node right here, so we're kind of stuck with this road terminating here. The only thing I could do to fix that would be to eliminate this road temporarily. There, that'll do the trick. And now I know that this is kind of the boundary for those sorts of uh, industrial uses. And now it's just filling in the rest of this area and then establishing land uses. Okay, so I think we're gonna leave some of these larger blocks and in the future, they could become places where we have parks or things of that nature. Okay, so I'm just doing the last bit of cleanup on our roadway network and I mentioned over here that these blocks are too long. We're gonna find the, the approximate center point. Just make that connection. Okay. So it's not perfect, but it helps us create that transition between these places. Now the other important thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is develop some sort of park in this area. So there are a couple different types of paths that we could choose. This is a pretty level area, so I think that we don't need the self-leveling paths that we get with parks. I think that we could just go ahead and have a pavement path. So I'm gonna turn off all of my snap twos. And one thing I want to think about is the connections through this area. So this will force pedestrian activity. It looks like we're missing a couple of roadway connections through here, so we're going to make those. Interestingly, this is not at all lining up, so I think we might want to fix that. Now we can add that path through here. 
And then I want to add kind of direct routes to places where people are going to want to go. So one of the things with park planning that I think is, is interesting is you can sometimes mirror roads that already exist or pads that already exist and they're not especially useful. So why not try to mirror pads that people don't have? Diagonal pads, for instance, would be very beneficial for people here if they want to get around. So this would be the shortest, most direct, and quickest path. So that's one of the reasons why I think it's so important to include these diagonal paths through here. So I am needing to kind of go through and, and redo some of these to make sure that they are as close to the road as possible so that we make some sort of connection. You can see over here, it didn't work all that well. It did make the connection, but it's not quite as clean as on the other side. It's okay. Good enough, we can cover some of that up with landscaping. This one's creating kind of a weird turn, but it'll look okay when it's complete. And this, again, is kind of ugly, but it is connected, so it should do the trick. And it'll look better once we're done. There we go. So I made that connection, and I didn't disrupt the path network, which is exactly what I was hoping for. So we have this, and now you might be wondering, where do we go from here? And do we expand beyond here? And I don't know that we're going to do that necessarily right off the bat. That might be a later build sort of thing. I really care about this particular area the most. So what we're going to do now is start to think about our utilities. So let's get our power set up, er, power and water set up, or actually not even power, just water set up through here. Okay, we should be good with water. Next, we're going to want to think about our rail. So we have this connection here, but it's not quite perfect. So what I think I'm going to do is try to mirror the connection that I'm trying to make. And then let's be really deliberate about this. We'll go out, say 30 tiles and make our connection there. Or at least fairly close. And now I'm going to pause this for a minute as I decommission some of this track. I'm just trying to be as space efficient as possible. This would be a really tough sell, I think, to the rail company to, to straighten out their track, but we are going to do it. And now we have this nice controlled atmosphere, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's think about some of the things that we would need up front. And I mentioned park spaces. We're going to try to work those in first. The idea being that this entire area is master planned and these sorts of spaces would be contemplated right up front. So I want a couple of large parks in here. And then these uh, small playgrounds are going to be the locations for our schools as well. So let's also work those in. And while we're thinking about it, let's get our schools placed right off the bat. And we're also going to want a high school. And I think actually having this near the big park might be valuable. And along with that, let's put a basketball court. And are there any other sorts of amenities that could be valuable? Well, absolutely, but we need to give that some more thought. So I do think it would be neat to have a terminating vista that would have visual interest in this area. And that vista that I'm thinking of is this botanical garden. I think that it would be great to, to get off the train and that's what you see, get, off the, or get out of the subway. I wish that I could stop snapping, <laughs> but I can't seem to. That said, it's completely fine. Little imperfections here or there, that's what makes a city interesting and unique. And we'll make some pedestrian connections and be really thoughtful about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm really liking what's happening here. I think that this is a great setup that we could continue to refine and make even better. So one of the things I wish I could do would be to make a park area and be able to throw in some of the park amenities within here, but I know that that's just not possible unless I add a gate. So I could add one gate, one main park gate, or a side gate, 
if I really cared to make this perfect, and I might just do that. So not perfect, but pretty good. And now we can add the other main gate, or the, the side gate rather, on the other side. We've got to make our last path connection through here. And I hate that that's wonky, but it, it could be much worse. So <laughs> we will try to mask some of that with uh, landscaping, of course. <laughs> so next, I want to take a look at healthcare, and you can see that there's a really significant gap through here. We have our our, our, our our main hospital over here so I do think that there would be valuable in having one near sunset so I think we're gonna add one over here near this big space that we have we're also gonna need death care another thing that we are lacking in this particular area I'm noticing that we didn't extend this road through and I think there might be some value in doing so so we're going to do that now one thing I haven't done through here is there are usually a bunch of pedestrian connections that I make through these neighborhoods. I'm thinking we might hold off on doing that in this area and just use that for landscaping. So this will kind of show the breakdown of Old Verde Beach into kind of this master planned transit oriented development. So what I would want to do in this area is we're going to create a couple of neighborhoods. So first of all, we're going to have a neighborhood around here where we have a high intensity of land uses. So we're gonna take off our height restriction in this little area and allow density to completely max out. You might wonder why I'm staying away from sunset, and that is because I kinda of want there to be a natural transition, and we already have high density uses there, so why not just allow that density to remain the same? I think that that would feel appropriate along that corridor. So I'm planning not based on just blocks, but I'm planning based on the feel of the neighborhood. So I'm actually gonna start this new neighborhood on sunset. And then we'll make one more neighborhood over here. Okay, so we have these three neighborhoods now. We'll change the names of these in the future, but for now we're gonna leave them as they are. I do kind of like that King Hills came up, kind of an old homage to the King Oil Company, <laughs> but we'll probably change that in the future. So what I'm thinking is that in Cherry Hills, we're gonna have all max density buildings. Let's go through here and look at the policies. We will get rid of that high rise ban. Over here in King Hills, we're gonna have a transition. So we're gonna have one block of mid rises and then directly kind of starkly go into this uh, more, I guess, low rise sort of development pattern. So we're gonna use European suburbia. In here, we're gonna use modern city center. I'm gonna leave it completely default right here. So we'll get some different flavors of buildings in these different areas. We also want elder care and child health care in this area. Now, one of the things that someone mentioned is that I put this building right here, which is kind of unfortunate. A couple of things that were unfortunate. First of all, I took away the striking views. You now you have a view of a warehouse. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Probably could flip flop these in the future, but maybe not because they were built and it's a kind of an unfortunate mistake. They had a great view for a little while. Uh, one of the things I did is I added this uh, elder care center really close to the industrial district and I know that that appears to be a problem but this is a relatively clean area so it's mainly noise that is an issue but I'd look at these uh, barracks as kind of lower noise sorts of places too and they're the, the back is facing towards that area so I'm not overly concerned about it I am more concerned about this there we'll clean up some of these roads a little bit all right so let's get another elder care facility over here. And I think we want to keep that. If we can get this close to the park, it will, will make up for our mistake <laughs> in placement. We'll give them good access to everything. And our child health center, we're going to keep kind of close to the hospital. That makes a ton of sense to me. So we've got that stuff. The last things that we really need through here are fire stations and police departments. And you can see we have okay coverage, but near the bridge, our coverage starts to lack a bit. So I don't want to put this on the collector, but I think having it here on Barlow Street, or what it's currently named, 
would make a ton of sense. Same thing with the police, uh, the large police headquarters. I think this would also be a fantastic location for that particular structure. And now our coverage is good in this entire area. So I want to pause this for a minute as we start to put down some of our land uses. So what I'm thinking is we're going to have a mixture of offices and residential surrounding Cherry Hills. Uh, and the thought there is it'll be quieter for some of these users. We're also going to use offices to flank this, uh, this rail corridor in an effort to kind of block out some of that sound. The other place that we're going to use offices will be along this boundary with the industrial area, kind of as a way to shield the neighboring properties from some of the noxious externalities of, of uh, the park, of, of uh, the industrial area. There, that should do the trick. And now there'll be kind of this, this row of this row of office blocking this entire area from view. So that, that'll work well. So we're going to continue our low density residential neighborhood over here and our high density pattern along sunset. Now we have not been maintaining ocean, which is something that we should probably be thinking about right now as well. Now I did quite unfortunately take out a tower right there, but I wanted to make sure that we get ocean built. We're going to connect up all of these north-south streets as well. And then we'll finish zoning in this entire area along or in between ocean and sunset. I'm keeping my zoning off the beach, if at all possible. I don't think it's entirely reasonable to develop these sorts of uh, uses on the sand. <laughs> and it's certainly possible. Look at Miami Beach or something, but uh, it's also a different, different case there. So now I want to mix in some of these office uses around the park and then the higher density residential, like I mentioned. And then as we back up from the park, I'm going to mix in some more commercial type uses. So I know that we have strong demand for all types of uses right now. So that's one of the reasons I'm not being overly picky about how I'm zoning these. But I do want there to be a logical pattern for these uses. So one of the things I'm trying to do now is mirror the patterns that you see in the existing neighborhood because I think that would be important to the city, maintaining a consistent land use pattern. Now, one of the unfortunate things is normally you can connect these paths within the park to the roads. It looks like I'm able to do it, but boy is it tight. And I can't do it everywhere. Let's do the same thing over here. All right, that's good. And now through here, this is going to be a lot of residential. In fact, when I say a lot, I mean all residential. And over here, it's going to be the same story, except rather than using high density residential, we're going to use low density residential. Actually, we're going to have one more block of high density because I do want that transition to occur. Now, I'll show you what I mean in a second. So when we look at our neighborhoods. This is the first block of Kings Hills. So these are going to be absolutely maxing out as high as they can. So I want there to be a step down and this will be the step down. So these will be max height. These will be mid rises. These will be low density mid rises along here. So it's going to be a nice transition between the densities. Finally, let's do a little bit of decorating in this park area. And I am going to keep my decoration to a minimum here. I think that it's it's easy to overdo it. One thing we cannot forget is landscaping. Now 
Okay, so one of the main things I'm trying to do here is rather than using my landscaping, or rather than using fences to define this park space, I want to use landscaping. So I am going through here and just kind of smoothing some of the imperfections out. That looks really nice in my opinion. It's a good start anyway. Let's add a couple of shade trees through here. Next, I think I want to flank some of these paths with small bushes. This would be an excellent place for prop line tool. Okay, now let's take a, a real close look at the park. Oh yeah, so this, this to me feels like a very planned space and a place that will have lots of activity. But it's only going to have lots of activity if we activate the space by adding those transit lines. So we need a transit stop here. And I think we're just going to go into Central Station and do a different stop than we've been using before. Perfect. And then we also need to make our connection to our subway. Okay, and now we are at a spot where I think we can watch this fill in. So we're going to take a look at that now. Okay, so things haven't completely filled in, but a lot has changed. So I want to take a look and see how things are looking. And look at this park area. It is fantastic. The amount of utilization that we're seeing here is just kind of out of this world. You see people walking any which way to get all around this area. So let's take a look at some of our ridership. So 190, not, not fantastic, but not terrible. And let's take a look at our subway. 323, that's pretty good. So, wow, look at all these people just streaming out of here. We'll slow things down a little bit. So much activity. That is exactly what we were hoping for. So I want to also take a look at our land values. You can see that we're not quite as high as some of the other areas, which is going to prevent some of these buildings from maxing out. You can see that our offices and our some of our commercial are a little bit closer, but we still need more value and we absolutely have no residential demand at this point. So that might be a rationale for converting some of these blocks over here to commercial uses. And in fact, it might be nice even to go through here and make some special districts. In fact, why don't we extend this out another block? And I think that we could really go through and do this with a number of locations in this, in this uh, particular part of the city and really make it feel like a special place. But for the time being, this is going to be good. So I do want to do a couple of quick things. So one of the things that I didn't do is go through and look at the street names and make sure that they extend all the way through. So let's do that now. Okay, so we will have some street naming that we need to do, but we're going to take care of that in a special episode where we focus on decorating and, uh, and, and some of the naming that we are sorely behind on. And some of the decorating I want to do is some landscaping. I didn't do a lot in this area and I could see the need to go through and add some landscaping in between areas like this, where there's just, you know, fairly significant amounts of underutilized space where you'd expect to see some sort of landscaping. So we're certainly going to get to that at some point in time. And as I talk, <laughs> little bits here and there, but that's really in my mind what makes it an area feel complete. Now, one of the things I mentioned in the last episode that I never got around to is actually adding a waste transfer facility and a processing complex. So I do want to think about that now. And it looks like our processing complex won't fit in here, but I do want to get a waste treatment facility or a transfer facility because we just are really kind of on the edge there. And this is really going to help out a lot. The other thing that we could do is add a recycling center in close proximity. Actually, I'm going to call a quick mulligan. We haven't, we haven't called a mulligan yet today, so I think it's, it's just about the appropriate time to do so. Why don't we relocate that over here? Get it even closer to that collector. 
and then have a couple of recycling centers over here. And these will work in conjunction with one another. So that will be beneficial to the end of eliminating some of the tra trash in this area. We'll probably need more capacity, but this will help out quite a bit and at least make sure that we're not going to burn down in this area because we do have trash accumulating all over the city. So we are going to need to do something more substantial with trash collection in the future, but this will help for now. Let's take a look. Wow, yeah, we've got some issues. You can see that we had a fire while we were simulating, so interesting. Should probably just do a quick sweep of the city to make sure that there are no buildings that need to be repaired. <laughs> oh, there we go. Let's get this fixed. Well, it wouldn't be Verde Beach without some fires, and we've certainly had them. Interestingly, there's this little square right here that's not developing. Huh. I might actually go through and put in a little bit of commercial in this area. That's our, our biggest need, and I think it'll thrive here. Nice. Uh, there's a lot of activity in this area, and that would be very beneficial for commercial type uses. So we're good there. We don't have a lot of trees here, so this area won't burn down yet, but we certainly want to add that soon. <laughs> so I think that we are uh, in a spot where I'm comfortable leaving this for the day. Um, I, our next episode is going to be focused on this island out here. And I'm really excited for that one. I think it's going to be a good one. And uh, we're going to have a lot out there. We're going to have a lot out there. So thank you so much for uh, joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the not notification bell if you want to be notified when I release new videos. I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. You can see their names here. They help me make all the content I do by providing me support for the channel. And I also want to thank you for joining me. Uh, your support means the world to me. And the best thing you can do to help the channel would be to hit that like button. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you in the next one. Let's have a brief city tour. Bye-bye.